Uh, welcome everyone to day two of our My Operations Center digital training. Uh, so with that, we might as well start off with our presenters here this morning. Uh, so I'll start off with myself. I'm Matthew Kynock. I'm one of our solution support specialists uh, out of the Melita store. I am James Mowat. You would have heard me blabbering on yesterday. I'm a field advisor out of Oak Bluff and I'm uh, ready to cover some some fun content today. Perfect. And then Justin might have his mic muted. So Justin Cleaver is also on with us today this morning as well. Uh, Justin's a field advisor out of the Portage location. Justin will be trying to answer a lot of your questions that you guys might have in the uh, in the chat uh, in the chat window this morning. So uh, with that, we'll just kind of give a quick quick overview of what we covered in day one, where we went over things like our permissions, who has access to your uh, to your data. Um, and how you can control that, our map and our setups pages, and really trying to go through a lot of those steps of our setup data, uh, and some of the changes that we've had in land and, and, and products um, here very recently. So today in day two, now we're going to switch ourselves over a little bit, and we're going to look at things from our plan and our analyze side. So we're going to look at things like our crop planner and our work planner. Uh, we're going to look at maintenance when it comes to setting up maintenance plans for our equipment uh, in operations center. Uh, and then we'll switch focuses and we'll look at analyze and we're going to look at our analyze tool. We're going to look at our field analyzer, uh, which has now been merged with our field analyzer beta for almost all of our functions. Um, and then I'm going to finish up going over uh, machine analyzer uh, today. So those will kind of be our topic, our topics for today, which I believe I have doubled up here on our slides. Um, but with that, um, as long as there's no questions or anything for anybody, we will keep going. And James, if you want to. Take it away. Yeah, so we will cover our crop planner and our work planner first here. So just a quick highlight of what we're going to look at. We're easily going to create a few fields and make a plan for our upcoming year. We're going to look at what happened with some of our harvests in the past years in our crop planner. And we're going to look at some of the other side functions that maybe don't get used quite as much in crop planner. And then when we jump into work planner, we're just going to walk through uh, making a work plan for harvest and maybe viewing and editing some of our uh, seeding work plans that we're going to send to our display and just cover a few few new things in there. So with that, I'll just attempt to share my screen and we will get started. All right, can you see my screen, Matt? Yep, take it away, James. Perfect. OK, so we are in the crop planner part of the drop down plan menu. Uh, you'll see I've already got a few test things loaded in here. We're looking at our 2022 crop right now. Uh, you'll notice there's cover crop, first main crop, and second main crop for the most part. I think a lot of people are probably just going to be using the first main crop option. Uh, not a whole ton of guys doing cover crops, but it's nice to have that option there. And we do have guys doing things like Piola, where we might be doing some uh, double cropping. So there's that option as well. But today we're going to focus on the first main crop option. So you can see that we've got some corn loaded in here, some canola, a little bit of wheat, and that's pretty much all that's in there for our, our 2022 crop plan right now. And I'll just scroll down a little bit to show some of our previous crop plans. This is where I think this tool is pretty handy. If you are trying to uh, plan your crop rotations over multiple years, it's nice to be able to easily go back and look at what your what you had been growing on certain fields in the past few years. It's just a nice, quick, easy way to track and view everything. So if we're looking at our 2021, we can quickly see some wheat, barley, corn fields that we had, and we can go back to our 2020 as well. You can easily expand and collapse some of these menus so you can uh, look at just the seasons you're wanting to look at and not get too confused. Yep, there's our wheat, canola, and soybeans from 2020, okay. So let's focus on how to create a crop plan for 2022. As I said, there's not a whole lot of options in here. It's uh, pretty straightforward. If you're wanting to add a crop, you simply click on the top right. Let's add some corn as we had down below. And here's where you can have the option to name it whatever you want. Uh, so we have some decal down there already. We're just going to say decal one for making things easy. Once you've entered your crop name, I like to usually go by varieties. I think it's pretty handy for tracking things. After that, you select fields. You can see here for 
our canola. We've already got some fields selected for that, so we know that's our crop plan for canola right now. We've got a lot of wheat, we've got a lot of soybeans, and you'll see that's all in our 2020 crop plan. All right, so let's just select a few fields here. You know what? We know that all of these are going to be our the cob corn. So we're going to click on those and save. Now it shows yes, we have seven fields selected. I want to save that. And then it'll take a little bit, but we should see our decal one pop up down here, and then we'll walk through some of the map functions. And you'll have to bear with us a little bit today. We're getting into, uh, when we get into crop planner, work planner, and things like field analyzer, there's going to be a little bit of lag in some of this loading, uh, just because we have a huge amount of fields loaded into our demo access account. We can see our decal one has popped up here. Perfect. We can see all our corn, canola, wheat. And if you make any mistakes or you want to get rid of anything, it's pretty quick and easy. You go, oh, that wheat, I actually didn't want to add that in there. All you do is quickly click on it. You can see it's highlighted. What would you like to do with the one selected crop plan? I would like to delete it. Once that's done, you've cleaned up your crop list a little bit. OK, let me look at this on the map just so I can see where are all these laid out. Maybe I want to print this off and send it to some of my hired guys. So I'll go to the bottom left here with us having so many fields loaded. I want to get rid of all the unplanned fields. Now you'll see it zoomed in a little more automatically. You can start to see some of our little dots here and there. Uh, everything is color coded, so you can see our decalb corn is in the red. You can see we've got some of our branded wheat in the yellow. I'm hoping that a lot of you don't have farms that are this spread out. <laughs> so typically you'll see that it's zoomed in quite a bit more and you'll get a better image of what's what's happening. But once you have this loaded, there is a nice little print option that's down here in the right. So you can print or save to a PDF this quick map of your crop list. And that can be pretty handy. Some guys really like that to just make a map of their farm each year and see what's going on and print it out, mark it up as much as they want as they make changes throughout the year. So I really wanted to show you that map side. There's not a ton to this, but it is a very handy tool. Uh, so I think it's a pretty interesting thing to cover. Unfortunately, you'll see in our little pie chart with having so many fields, we haven't filled things out very much, but you can click on this, show your crop split, and it gives you pretty much a pretty good idea of percentage wise. How do you have your farm split up for all your different crops for the year? And the last thing I want to cover in here is this add new season button. You can click in here. And you can go back and say in 2013, 2014, you didn't have a crop plan loaded, but you want to add that in so you can go back and make good crop rotations from past to future. Or if you're looking at 2022 and you say, you know what, I think I have a good idea of how I want to lay my crops out for the next three year rotation, four year rotation, I'm going to click on 2023, 2024, and I'm actually going to make crop plans for those years right now as well. And the best part about that is you can always edit them. Nothing's locked in. It's it's easy to work with. So that's pretty much everything for the crop planner side. So let's move on to work planner. So in here you can see you've got tillage, seeding, application, and harvest. We're looking at 2022. You can filter by any of your fields, crops, varieties, uh, and then we'll just walk through a little bit of a plan for harvest, and I'll show you some seeding and application afterwards. All right, so I wanna make a plan for harvest. First thing I'm gonna do is select my field. Once I've done that, you know what, we have corn here this year. That's my crop, that's my variety. I have my guidance lines loaded here, you can see on the screen. Yes, I want those to be available. What machine am I gonna use? We're gonna use our new X9, and you can pick any kind of implement as well. So your headers should be loaded in here after doing all of your product 
and equipment setups with Matt yesterday. Which operator do I want to use? Matt's been doing a good job uh, since we rehired him, so we're going to have him run our X9 this year. And what do we want to name our work order and what kind of instructions do we want to put in there? So work order, if we're just going to call it corn harvest, you can do whatever you want. And work instructions. Okay, let's harvest this on the 15th. That's the notes I'm going to leave for Matt in the cab. And with that, I can save my harvest plan. We can see we've got 2022 test north here. And I can look at it and realize, oh, I actually made a plan before. I didn't like that one. Now that I've made a new one, this is much better. So I click on that one, quickly delete it. Now I've cleaned up my list a little bit. So I just want to show you a little bit of seeding and application setups as well. They're all pretty straightforward and easy to walk through. One thing for seeding that I would like to show, uh, each one you can select and go to the edit tab and it'll break down which part of it do you want to edit. So this one, I'm going to look at some of our products and see if we want to make any changes here. We can see we've added our 1152 in already. We have our rates and our units loaded. We have our NH3 loaded as well. And you know what? We actually have a prescription for our NH3 that we want to load in there. So instead of following our 130 rate, I'm going to click on this prescription tab. You can see with our prescription being made in Op Center already, we're just going to quickly grab that one. Perfect. That's the rate that I want to go at. So I'm going to save this. All right. Now that I have my planned seeding and my planned harvest, everything looks good. I want to send this to the equipment. Perfect. There's my work setup. I'm going to choose my two tractors to send my harvest information to. Perfect. <laughs> After that's done, we can click send. Obviously, today I'm not going to do that so we don't overload all of our tractors <laughs> in Portage. Once you've sent that off to the equipment, the employee can quickly pull it up, view what work he has to do. And once he's finished that field, I'll just click on this complete tab here. This is how you would manually say, yes, that work has been done in Operations Center, but I just wanted to pull it up so you guys could see. Planned work executed on a Gen 4 display will be marked as complete automatically once it is visible and analyzed. So if your operator has completed the work, you have your wireless data transfer and it's loaded into Operations Center, that's going to show complete right away. It's automatically going to update. So I just wanted to show you guys that function. And that's really all that there is in Work Planner. Obviously, you can go back and look at some historical work plans. Uh, you can use some of those to base work plans for the next year. It's not a tool that everyone's going to use, but there are certain guys that are going to have some value here where you may have multiple operators and you're trying to save a bit of communication. So having all of your rates and varieties loaded in here already, your operator can quickly pull that up instead of having to call or text you and see, yes, this is the rate that he wanted me to go at, I can enter it in and I'm off to the races. And with that, I will head back to our call and we will pass it off to Matt. And he's going to talk a little bit more about maintenance. Actually, before we go into maintenance, I guess I should explain. Yep. <clears throat> so we have the work planner portion inside operation center but why does work why do we have work planner and ultimately why is it different than a setup file and what it comes down to is when you say create that work planner file and you send it to the piece of equipment what happens is it um when the operator pulls into the field it's going to auto pop up on the screen to try and load all of that information so that means that the operator with one click of a button can load the right client farm and field could potentially load the right documentation setup um you know our right varieties our right tank mixes or products things like that so it can eliminate a lot of those certain um errors or things like that that could happen with our documentation setup um it loads the right boundaries you know those kind of things that would all come in with that work planner file so that's one of the nice parts with work planner now we actually have a question in the chat from one of our own product specialists which is good um, right now, one of the issues we'll say with work planner is with our air seeders is that if you build that work planner file um, that we have seen. I should share my screen just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. If I go back into that work planner that James created. So 
so here we can see right now we're looking at our seating um, work planners for 2022. Um, and we can see we had our multiple products in there. We had our Invigor Canola, we had our 1152 and our NH3, but it won't auto assign those products to the right tanks depending upon the tank configuration. So you still have to go in and make sure they're assigned in the right spot. It doesn't auto assign those products to potentially the right tank. So um, it does work a little bit simpler with say a planter um, with maybe just liquid fertilizer and, and your seed. Uh, it's still not perfect for an air seeder, uh, but it definitely is better than last year, which didn't work for an air seeder at all. Um, but it definitely could work very, very nice for say harvest um, and potential and spraying as well, because at harvest, the operators can pull into the field with say multiple machines, which is much more likely when it comes to combines, you can select um, the operator goes in, basically sits the OK button on the display. It will load in the right documentation, data, the client farm field, all that information so that our data then comes together properly into operation center uh, when it sends in with wireless data transfer. So it can hopefully help eliminate some of those potential errors. Now, the one thing I also have to keep in mind is that work planner only works with Gen 4 displays. Uh, so like our 4600s and our 4640s, it is not compatible with our 2630s or like the 4200s and, and 4240 displays. So. OK, so if you guys have any questions, keep them coming there in the chat window. Um, but what I'm going to go over now a little bit is our maintenance tool in Operations Center. So it's not one that's probably used by a lot of people. Um, but if we go down here, we can see our maintenance here so we can plan our equipment maintenance intervals and our repairs. So if I click on it. Might take a second to load here. OK, so we should hopefully see our equipment in our list. So right now we can see down here at the bottom, we have our machines that don't have a plan. Um, up here we can see that we don't have any maintenance due uh, or due soon or nothing here under our survey. But what we're going to do is go down here and I'm going to pick on this 9420R that I've been using and I'm going to create a maintenance plan for it. And what this will allow me to do is do two different things. We can make what we call a factory plan with our factory recommended service intervals, or we can make a custom plan. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to create a factory plan. So what I'm going to do with my factory plan is it's going to make me select the options that I would have on my tractor. So I'm going to go in here. So my plan name, I'm going to call it a factory plan. I'm going to estimate that I'm using this tractor, say roughly 400 hours a year. Uh, my plan is going to start at roughly 230 engine hours, and I'm going to base that off what I can see up here at the top of 224 engine hours currently on the tractor. So I'll just put 230 in there, and then the machine age goes in simply because that's going to tie into some of our annual or um, yearly or, or based intervals. So I'm going to say that that uh, machine is 13 months old, and I'm going to want this plan to start, say, April 1st. Now, the other thing I could do down here is I could select how long I want my plan to go. So let's say I plan to keep that tractor for four years or I'm going to build my plan at least for four years. Um, then below that, I get into my machinery options, and this is where I need to pick what I have equipped on the machine. So it's going to have a regen system. It's going to have high flow hydraulics. Let's say it has a PTO and the front suspension. So once I have my options selected, I can go down here and I can select my build plan. So this might take a second here just to process. So now that we can see here, it's just going to show me a few things here in my factory plan. So over here on the left hand side, it can show that my plan is based upon 400 engine hours a year. So it's going to show that I'm going to start at 230 and then it should end at 1830. So that would be my four year plan. Um, and then it shows for my calendar based over here uh, how long my intervals are going to be or how long my plan's going to last till. And then if I scroll down, it also shows me here what types of oil and things like that that I would need inside my uh, inside my tractor. Over here on the right hand side, this is where now it breaks out my intervals for the piece of equipment. So we can see uh, every so often. So I say at 250 engine hours here, this is telling me that I should be checking things like my tire pressure, uh, my brakes, my engine oil, my coolant level, things like that. But then I should also be lubricating things like my PTO drive shafts, my drive lines, uh, my hinge pins uh, in my gudgeon, uh, things like that are all things that should be lubricated. So it shows that at 250 hours. 
We have the ability over here on the right that we can add extra tasks to the interval if we want. So say we had a blade on our four wheel drive, you could custom add an interval in there to make sure that the blade gets lubricated as uh, greased as well. We could edit uh, the interval as well. And then if we decided we didn't want the interval, we can delete it entirely. So we can customize and add things through here the whole way through. Um, but for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to hit enroll plan. So what with the plan created now, the idea now is when we hit the get close to those service intervals, it's going to notify us in operation center and in the operation center mobile app as we get close to the intervals that those maintenance items are going to become due. So it kind of gives you a reminder right away that uh, there's going to be these certain components that we should look at for the machine. So this is kind of the main purpose here of our um, maintenance tool. We could see over here on our upcoming service on the left there as it loads. We can see that what's going to be coming up soon and how many of those different tasks are going to be in there. We can also see here under our service history as the work has been marked complete. Um, it will keep logs in here of what needs to be done. Now it shows canceled in here because I've uh, made a couple factory plans just as I'm using the tool a little bit for this tractor. So that's why it shows all these ones as canceled. But um, with if you had completed work in here, it would show up in here for your maintenance intervals for the machine. So might be a tool that would be useful for some of you guys, some, especially if some of you guys are lease customers. This could be a handy thing for to remember some intervals and things like that on a lease machine, but even just as much so on machines that you've purchased, uh, purchased and owned as well. So but anyways, that's kind of a quick overview of our maintenance tool. Um, but with that, we actually switch back to back to James. All right, let's start sharing again. OK, so now we're going to look at our analyze and field analyzer tools under the analyze tab. Uh, these are some of my two. These are my two favorite tools in Operations Center. All right, so we'll start with Analyzer because it's a little more basic and uh, easy, easy to view. But this, again, is one of my favorites because it helps summarize everything for you. Um, if you're looking at Analyze, you can summarize your varieties, your fields, crops, whole farm. You can kind of break this down however you like to view totals for your season. So right now we're looking at Harvest 2019, we're looking specifically at wheat, hard red spring. You can see we have a list of all of our fields here. Uh, everything that was harvested, average moisture, dry yield, your total yield for each field, and then your total yield for all of your wheat that year. Average speeds, when you harvested it, what your wet weights and total weights were. So it's a very handy tool. It's a great way to have a look at what happened with your season this past year. How did things go? And another thing to note here, this jumps back to yesterday when we're talking about client farm field, uh, doing proper field setups. Uh, you can see we have brand and capital letters and brand and lowercase letters, letters and brand and wheat. <laughs> so we have three different naming structures here. So that's obviously been done a little bit poorly. We should be seeing brand and wheat varieties, just one here. And you can see we have Eli Fall or a few other varieties as well. That's something that you'll notice gets duplicated when you don't set up your uh, fields and crops and products properly. So we don't want to just look at wheat. Uh, let's say we want to look at the whole farm for this year. You select all. Now you can see everything that you did that year how much area was harvested, what was the total yield you took off for the whole year for your farm, and the rest is pretty much the same. It'll just give you your average speeds last harvested. Uh, so having seen that, let's have a quick look at some of our application information. This one's also pretty handy when you're trying to track what work did I do with my sprayer this year? If you did custom work, it's easy to go in here and view it and break it out if you've set up your client farm fields properly. So we see we did a whole pile of work this year, sprayed a lot of products. Well, let's look at that products tab and break things down a little bit more. So these are all the fields that I sprayed these products on. And also here you get a little bit better information on what did I apply total? What was my average rate? What was I shooting for? 
So it's a pretty interesting breakdown of all sorts of things in Analyze. It's a very, very handy tool. Um, you can just filter it any way imaginable and you can look at historical data. Obviously, we're looking at 2019, so we're looking at a couple years past, but it's nice to be able to view your seeding and application as well, just to see what's going on in there. Perfect, didn't do a lot of seeding. So we had a great harvest for what we seeded in 2019, obviously, looking at just canola and soybeans. So one other function that I would like to show before we jump into the field analyzer tab is that once you've viewed all of these things, once you've viewed all of your varieties, you had a look at everything, you might have found something that was pretty interesting and you want to share it or export it, you can quickly go to that tab in the top right and it'll give you a few different options here. You can create just a field report that'll give you a bit of a map and summarize one field or you can do an analyze report that's going to give you a detailed report of all these breakdowns we were just looking at or a summary or if you're wanting to mess around maybe you have a few things you're still tracking in excel you want to create an excel file with this and download that report so you can quickly do that i've got some loaded here already that just show you oops, that just show a bit of your breakdowns um, so you can see your work totals, area harvested, yield, total yield for that field, shows everywhere that you harvested. Obviously, since this is a demo account, we're not going to have any full fields. It's got a bit of a legend on the side to break down your yield by color, total wet weight, what was your moisture for that field. So this one's broken down for everything that we did wheat, that we harvested wheat on. Uh, and this one is a different style of report that we viewed before. So this has all of your field breakdowns for wheat and what was your total dry yields. It's a bit, bit different layout for this kind of report, but also at the end when you scroll down, you see your total averages for, for everything for that year. It gives a nice summary of what's happened. All right, so now that we have viewed that, Go into our fields and we'll see 2022. There's our 2022 test field. You know what? Uh, I'm looking at a few things here and I actually want to see that and analyze. So you quickly click on that map tab and it immediately jumps into the field analyzer tab and starts to load that test field for you so you can have a closer look. Which leads right into the meat of John Deere Operations Center. This is one of my favorite tools. There are so many different things you can do in here. I'll try not to get too bogged down with it today. Uh, so you can see here, we've got our test field from yesterday loaded up, our 2019 harvest. Uh, I won't go into the release notes because I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, this is Field Analyzer Beta that has been rolled into Field Analyzer. So they used to be two separate tabs in this analyze drop down they're trying to get it all compressed into one now uh, so you can do everything in one tab they are working on other updates there are still analyze field analyzer functions uh, we'll show you in a minute we'll go through this edit tab and it's actually going to take us to the old style field analyzer uh, they're going to be doing updates every couple months and i think this is going to be a big focus for them to get that edit function built into this field analyzer tool and eventually they'll phase phase out that uh, two tool system and move it just into one. But some key things to look at here, uh, you can see you have your variety, your equipment all set up. So what harvest, what was harvested here, what equipment did it, uh, gives you some nice work totals that you would have already seen a little bit in Analyze. Performance, I'm not going to cover very much because Matt's gonna do a very detailed report of that in Machine Analyzer but you can look at a bit of your productivity, working time and throughput here. Uh, one thing that I really like is they've added timestamps now. So this may not be quite as handy for harvest, but for things like application, I think that's a very nice tool. Um, maybe you went out and did some spraying and someone thought it was a windy day and is saying, hey, you drifted on my field. You were out there. I, I saw you. Uh, this is a, a nice sort of, CYA documentation to 
come back to and say, this is when I was in the field. That way you're, you're not trying to remember what you did that day. It's been loaded into operations center. Here's where I started in that field. Here's when I ended. Uh, we can't see it in this drop down, but there is usually weather that's been added to this as well. Uh, that will only be tied to kind of the, the closest station, which could be quite a ways away, um, but you'll have at least some basic weather information for that day as well. So I think that's a bit of a handy tool. So this, a lot of this has been available in Field Analyzer Beta, but I want to show it off a little bit while we're in here. We want to do some comparisons. So let's look at our 2019 yield. We have all these different drop downs. Let's look at our elevation. And unfortunately, we don't have very good demo data sets. Uh, another part of this compare function that's very good is you can look at your harvest and this second tab, you could actually load up your seeding operation for the year. So say you had two different varieties that you seeded some on the south and some on the north, you could actually pull up that variety layer and see here, how did that yield differently? So today we're just gonna focus on our elevation. Okay, we can see a little bit here. All this is getting in our way. Let's just get rid of some of these drop downs. Let's zoom out. Okay, does do we have any correlation between our elevation and our yield this year? Doesn't look like there's a lot there. Let's actually do a compare of our moisture. What was moisture like? Okay, so we can see we did have some low moisture in this area. I want to have a look at that and see if that made any difference in our yield, especially in this part of the field. Instead of looking at the whole field, I wanna select a zone and I'm going to grab this polygon tool here. And I want to look at specifically that area. So you can see as soon as I fill out this rectangle on the right hand side for moisture, it immediately starts to fill out a rectangle for the yield map on the side. And it's going to quickly give us a summary here. So we're waiting for this to load, but the, the key part is really on this side. Did we have a big difference in yield where we had this lower moisture? So in the selected zone, got about 13 acres versus the whole field. Yield was 60, whole field was 61. So yes, we had some lower moisture in that, in that area, but did it make a difference overall? It doesn't look like it did. About a percent difference in moisture, no difference in our yield. So that's great. Did we have difference in our elevation? Oh, that is kind of interesting that we had a foot. We had more elevation in our lower moisture area versus the whole field. So that's a little bit of an interesting takeaway. Maybe in certain years that's going to have a have an effect on things. And there's a data analysis tab here. If we go into that, we get a little bit more of a detailed breakdown on everything. So you can see our moisture here. Uh, 12.6 to 12.9. You can see our yield tab and our total yield here. And one thing that is a little bit interesting to note when we're looking at the whole field here, we see that our yield does seem to drop as we get into those lower moisture areas. So the whole field overall, we did notice that lower moisture did seem to equate to less yield. Now, it hasn't been a massive difference for some of this. And one thing we have to keep in mind, this data hasn't been cleaned. So you can see there's a lot of empty areas here off to the side. And when we clean that data, we'll get a full post calibrated number for yield as well. And we may not have some of these calibration issues that you can see. But still a very interesting tool. So now we want to actually look at our overlay. So it's nice to see side by side, but I actually want to see these two layers overlay. So let's look at our elevation. We're seeing that there's a bit of a higher elevation in that area. Did that make a difference for us? So all this does is put those two layers right on top of each other. If you're in this drop down menu on the left, you can see we have our yield in the left side. We have our elevation on the right. And you can use this map to slowly show opacity, how kind of lighten and darken this map as it's overlaid to see how it matches up. So yes, we did have a bit of difference in our elevation here, right where it's 782, our highest elevation. 
Uh, we didn't actually see a lot of difference in our yield. So overall, not a lot of elevation changes on this field, and it doesn't seem to affect have affected our yield very much this year. But a nice tool, especially when you're wanting to overlay, say, a seeding layer versus a harvest one. If we were to do that, if we were overlaying, say, our two seeding varieties, and we've actually found, oh, you know what? There was a difference here. Uh, this variety that I chose turned out to be much better. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. I've got some good information there. You can actually click on the share and export function. Today, we're going to cover the download report side, uh, which just will give you a view of your field analyzer and a quick breakdown of that field. You can also share this work data with anyone that you're partnered with. So say you're working with a third party agronomist and you want to quickly share that information, you can click them in the drop down here and select that partner and send that field and work data straight to them. So it's a bit more of a direct way to do it, but if we're creating that report, I maybe I'm doing it because I farm with my brother or my dad and I chose that variety. They said it stinks. Turns out they were wrong. Perfect. Now I can pull up this data and I can really rub it in. Uh, we've created our field report over here. Again, it's just showing a lot of what you would see in the field in the analyze tab. Uh, it's just different ways you can pull these reports up and print them out, showing our start and end time, our work totals, total yield and a nice little overview of what was harvested in the field and what that data looks like and a quick view of our variety at the bottom. So a very nice little function to have. Now, one of the things that I've liked in the past is the edit function. So once you've gone through harvest, uh, say you have your post calibrated yield from the grain cart or the elevator now for that field and you want to go back and enter it and get your total yield absolutely bang on or uh, your crop type. Maybe you made a mistake and you should have had this uh, be marked as wheat, but it was actually uh, when someone was switching from wheat to canola, they had it entered as canola. Okay, well now I need to fix that. So you're, right now you're gonna go over to this edit tab and as soon as you click on this, it's gonna take us to the old side of field analyzer. All right, so as we get into here, this isn't going to be a perfectly functioning tool right now. As you can see, it's just taken us back to the map side. <laughs> and this is something I was hoping we wouldn't run into today. Uh, but this is part of what Operation Center is working on. Whenever you're trying to roll two things together like this, you are going to run into a couple headaches. So you just have to bear with me for now, and we'll hope that this works the second time around for us. As you can see in the top, it's just walking through. Again, the original version of Field Analyzer is still available, and it's going to still function until they finally roll that over and have it all in one. So this is looking at our older Field Analyzer setup right now. Here we have our dry yield on the our total dry yield on the side. We have this little button right here. Actually, before I get into that, I'm going to show that there is a delete function right here. Say you didn't turn your data collection off and you were actually driving down the road and you have a little piece of data that's over here instead of this entire field. You can actually go in and quickly delete data that doesn't belong. As soon as you pull it up and say, oh, that's harvest data that just doesn't make sense. It wasn't collected in the field. I got to get rid of it. You can quickly delete it by clicking the trash can and going through the delete function. But let's focus on the edit side. This is very important. So like I said, we've had people in the past, maybe they're switching from canola to soybeans and they actually just forgot to change that crop type. It's busy. Everyone has a million things on the go and harvest and they just forgot to change that. They can quickly come in here, go into your drop down and change it to whatever they want. So I'm going to leave it as wheat right now, but you can change it to canola. Maybe at the very end of this, we'll make that switch because that is a big change. Uh, you can change your varieties as well. Like I said, this has all been entered a little improperly. Maybe we want it all to be brand and uh, spelt like this. Maybe it was a Starbuck variety and it was just entered wrong. And now we want to go to our total dry yield. So we actually found out that our total dry yield was 
9251 bushels for this field. That's perfect. We can enter it in and as soon as we save this, it will save that information for us. And now we have our post calibrated yield. We have the proper crop type, proper season, proper variety. We've come back in and fixed some of those mistakes that we made during harvest. There's also the area work tab. Uh, some guys like this because your area worked typically is more than the, the boundary of your field. So a lot of guys run into that just because of harvest runtime and overlap, and a few things like that. So you can say, yeah, my area is actually, I know it's 158 acres exactly. So that's what I want to enter in and it'll fix that for you in the back end. All right. Uh, I will click on this edit field tab quickly just to show you guys that if you had multiple combines in the field, you can make adjustments here uh, to make things a little bit more proper. If you know if you know exactly what your average dry yield is, you can go back once you've post calibrated, you can go back and make changes in this slider. So we've only got the 1790 combine in here, but if you uh, harvested the field with multiple combines, you would see that pop up here. All right, we've made all our changes. You know what? This was actually canola. We fixed everything in here now. So as soon as we hit save, it's going to update that information for us. Now this part, you're definitely going to have to get used to a little bit of waiting. It's uh, not very easy for it to quickly change all of that information, uh, especially when you are changing crop types. So you'll see this run for a little while and afterwards you'll actually see a little pop up that might say uh, you will see once this map has been edited and sometimes you just need to refresh your tab over in the top left. Sometimes it may actually take a little bit longer for it to complete that that edit so you may have to come back later. So don't get worried if you save this and then you suddenly can't see your operational data for that field. That just means it's still being processed by Operations Center and it will come back afterwards. Also one thing to note, if we go back in here, I will just exit out of this. If we go back in here once we've made those changes and we actually made a mistake when we were editing it, we can go back to we can go back into our field analyzer and revert to our original data. So even if you've made those changes, you can go back and revert it to the original afterwards. And that really covers a lot of what I wanted to talk about in field analyzer today. Again, it's a very handy tool, especially when you're looking to compare things like application, spraying information versus harvest. That's a big part of what we uh, find valuable as field advisors. Maybe you did some test strips during the year. As long as you've entered in those separate varieties and you have those separate rates for your test strips, your data has come in here properly. Now you can have a quick look at all these changes I made in season. What happened at the end of year? When it came down to harvest, did it make a difference? Did I get more yield? Did I spend less money and maintain my yield? How did things go? So that's why I think this is such a powerful tool, especially when you're coupling it with some sort of third party platform and you either have someone like a field advisor like myself cleaning that data and pushing it back in the field analyzer or you're doing it on your own through some sort of third party organization and pushing that information back. Then you're getting absolutely accurate information, especially when you have your total yields all loaded in and you know exactly what you got on those fields. It's very handy. All right, with that, I will uh, stop blabbering on for a minute and I will pass things back to Matt and we will start to go over some of the machine analyzer information. Thanks, James. But before we do that, I'm actually going to drop a few tidbits. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that I can show you guys yet, but what I can share is a few things and steps and directions that deer is going to be taking field analyzer here what we can kind of look like at in the next year. So one first off, one of the things that we've had the lack of ability to do in the past is the ability to edit um, some of our data in field analyzer. So individual points or, or data cleanup measures, things like that. And, and now that field analyzer and field analyzer beta have been merged, that is some of the next stuff that DEER is going to be working on to make available in Operations Center is to give you guys some data cleanup tools. So that will be something that will be really nice. Um, 
one of the other things that deer is working on is like we mentioned in harvest, you know, when you end up with those red streaks in your yield map as you come in and out of your headlands and things like that, deer's working on software to be able to auto recognize the delays and things like that in the crop coming in and registering on your mass flow sensor on the combine. So it will auto adjust the yield maps to be more accurate so we don't see those red streaks. So we shouldn't have data then to clean up in the first place. So these are some of the things that deer will be working on as they go through the next um, this next kind of year or so in operation center. The other big thing, and it's going to tie in a little bit now as to what I'm going to be talking about with machine analyzer is there's going to be a lot more emphasis on tying your machine performance to your agronomic data. So we're going to be able to actually look and break down more in the data. What's our actual machine productivity like? How much actual fuel are we burning? Not just for the entire field, but in a specific area. Um, and that's why I'm going to show you guys some of the tools and stuff that we have, what's currently available and and some of this stuff is going to change throughout the you know the next year or so as there's going to be more and more features available with this so what we're looking at right now is an example of machine analyzer um so if you look up here at the top under our analyze tools we have our machine analyzer is where i'm in now i uh mlc clays graciously graciously agrees that i could show their equipment data uh to you guys to show some examples so i'll show you guys what our machine analyzer kind of looks like for those of you that aren't familiar with it now inherently machine analyzer does become more and more powerful the more equipment that you have uh it gives you the ability to compare more and more pieces of equipment with each other to really look at those performance metrics but um, the first thing that we could do with machine analyzers up here at the top, and this is what we can do is we can manage our views. So right now I have it selected on a custom view called fluids. Um, so it's going to give me my average fuel rate, my average def rate, and it's going to compare my average engine load to give me an idea of what those fuel rates are going to look like in those situations. But you have the ability to go in here and manage a view and we could create a new one. And in here, there's all kinds of different metrics that we can see um, to track with our equipment. Now, the one thing that I will point out is when you get into certain ones of these, like if I get into my def, for example, it breaks it down by construction and forestry as well as overall def. So there's certain metrics in here that are only going to read and show up if your equipment is a construction or forestry piece, which most of you might not have those pieces of equipment inside your operation center account. So just be careful when you're picking some of these layers that it doesn't say C and F next to them when you're adding a custom layer. So the idea is you can go through pick all the different types of ones you want. So you could see things like our utilization. So this is a very powerful one for our combines. So we can look at how much of our percentage of our time is idle in transport or in working, as well as we can look at things like, um, what's our machine state? Is it, um, is it idle with a tank full? Is it idle with a tank empty? Are you at max throttle with a tank empty, max throttle with a tank full? Things like that. So it lets you maybe draw some conclusions. You know, are we waiting for a grain cart? Is the operator sitting idling and efficient? You know, things like that. There's a lot of different metrics that we can look at with it. But um, one of the other ones we can do even is um, how much are we using precision technology? Do we be using some of the technology on our combines? Um, our examples in here are we using efficiency manager modes in our um, in our tractors or is our section control turned off uh, turned on for our sprayers uh, things like that so there's a lot of technologies even with our pulsing for sprayers how much are we actually pulsing with them so there's a lot of tools in here that you could select and and make a custom view um, for simplicity though I'm just going to stay on the one I have um, so that would be my view up at the top so the next thing that we can do then is we have the ability in here that we can adjust our time date so we need to make sure that we're obviously going to be picking a date that we can see equipment data so for simplicity i'm just going to go down here and pick lifetime for these machines and then next to us here we can pick what type of equipment we want to see for the information so we can select whether we want sprayers tractors combines things like that and of course it worked yesterday when i was building this example and now today nothing is loading awesome um let's maybe reset my filters here this way we'll do lifetime first see if we can get it to load 
And of course it doesn't. Great. Um, okay, and unfortunately I don't can't really show you guys information without looking at other someone's someone else's private data. But the idea is here in these windows, we would see a green bar that would fill up and it would show the metrics of what we would see for each of these individual tractors. So our 8345R, our 9570R, and our 9RX590. And then under here, under our tractor window, what it would actually do is show the average fuel level between all three tractors. Now the average might not be that relevant because these are drastically different tractors, especially the 8R to the 9s. Um, but where this tool becomes useful then is we can actually look at, for example, and compare um, if you had multiple combines of the same model, you could look and see what the different uh, fuel rates are, what could different productivity levels with the combines could be, uh, def consumption, technology usage, things like that. So you could really look at different things. And then when you get to your tractors, you can look at things like um, how much actual horsepower are you using? What's your actual average engine load where the tractor is being worked? And that can give you an idea that if you have a, a 590 horsepower tractor, for example, like this one, but you're only running it constantly at the 40% engine load while you're doing your main tasks with the tractor, maybe you don't need a 590, maybe you need a 540. So um, there's things like that that you could do and look at, at, at certain tools um, for this equipment. So. I'm sorry, guys, I apologize that it's not working. It's unfortunate it was working great yesterday, um, but not today, unfortunately. So I'm not sure why. Um, but with that, one of the other things that I'm going to do is show you guys a little bit of how this equipment data is now actually tied into Field Analyzer. So I'm going to go into my Field Analyzer tool. And I don't have permission for his account, which is good for his agronomic data. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some demo data here from from John Deere. So what I'm looking at now is a yield map here for some corn harvest in the States. So we can see things like here, like James was saying, our start and end dates, some of our work totals, some of our performance totals, a variety if it had one assigned and our piece of equipment over here to the right. Um, so, so there's some of our our metrics, excuse me, that we can see. But one of the some of the other things that we can do in here is our data analysis tool. So if I select over here, now it's going to ask me to add another layer. So if you have uh, your display up to date and your MTG up to date with 2021, if we go in here into my corn harvest layer, you'll start to see some different layers in here we didn't have before of data. Things like our equipment layer and things like our fuel efficiency, fuel rate per area and fuel rate per hour. So I can pick for the first off something like my piece of equipment. So if you had multiple pieces of equipment combining in this field, it does take a few uh, a few seconds for this data to process in here. But if we had multiple, say, S770s or S780 combines in the field, it would break down the specific acres har harvested for each, the yield recognized from each, the total bushels, moisture, things like that. But if we switch from our work totals here to our performance, it would actually break out now and show us what the actual productivity and average speed per machines were, the working time, how much actual fuel per machine, the throughput, things like that, uh, that for the combine. So um, it's kind of one of the nice things that you can do is it actually, this is what I was kind of talking about where we're starting to see the agronomic information actually tied in with um, the agronomic data. So it actually gives us a much better visualization of some of the productivity um, with our machines. So you can see on here that that combine was averaging 6.2 miles an hour, doing almost 30 acres an hour in this field, um, and and uh, hitting almost uh, 7,900 bushels per hour uh, in this field. And you can see the fuel rate tied to it as well. So those are some, like, some kind of cool metrics that we can kind of look at for some of the equipment. But if we change this over down here now to an example of, say, fuel per area, it will change in my analysis tool as well. And I'll take a second here again just to just to process. This one will probably take a touch longer than the last one. As you can see, it takes a little while longer to load some of these things. Uh, what we found is customer accounts typically work quite a bit faster. It's just because we have so much demo data and demo fields in here that it seems to really grind things to a halt. That's right. So here we can see now, because we're looking at our yield and our fuel rate per area, we actually have it broken down here on the left of our actual gallons per acre that we were burning 
the speed that we were going while we were burning that fuel level, our productivity at that level, um, how much time we spent at each one of those levels, um, and things like that. So we can actually start to break down, um, even when it gets to certain yield areas and things like that, you know, uh, were we less efficient or more efficient with the combine? Um, and where this kind of ties in is we actually have one, I, I was speaking with one operator and he does fungicide trials in canola. And what he does is he looks at this data now to see, um, was he burning more fuel in certain areas of the field? And does that correlate to a fungicide trial to show that maybe our certain fungicide keeping the plant health better, they're staying greener. And he's comparing that to the, maybe the moisture level of the, of the fungicide trial as well. Um, to try and draw some conclusions on was the fungicide effective or not. So I'm not going to say it's foolproof, uh, foolproof, pardon me, um, but it starts to tie in a lot of different things that we can look at when we can compare the equipment measurements with the agronomic measurements. So um, it's kind of some cool set of tools that we can start to look at and, and to really analyze and really look at that, that machine productivity. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give you guys an example of what that kind of looks like um, and some of these new features that we have in Operations Center that you could look at. So um, with that, that's kind of everything I had for Machine Analyzer um, and, and kind of showing it how that machine equipment now ties into Field Analyzer as well. Um, I guess I would be remiss to point out the same thing like we've seen in a lot of our other analyzer tools. Um, you can go in here and generate reports and things like that from your um, equipment. So I'll just select all of them. This is from the deer side now. It does give us the option here that we can export things from PDFs, um, more images or bigger reports to print or for, for spreadsheets and things like that as well for that machine information. So there are different tools we have available for that. So, um, but with that, that's um, kind of everything we have here for day two for you guys. Um, is there any other questions that you guys have in the chat? Hopefully, I think we've answered answered everyone's questions at this point. Um, but um, I guess I should share this back again just to finish my. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, we could try and quickly walk through something on Operations Center. Or if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth information, uh, maybe something you think we can't quickly answer here, make sure to reach out to your field advisor or solution support specialist, and we can walk through things a little more specifically. There's a lot of functions built into Operations Center, and uh, we could spend hours going over all of it. We really wanted to try and cover the basics for you guys and show you some of the changes that have been made recently. So if you do have more questions, let us know. That's right. And hopefully you guys can see this on the screen there. I've kind of got a show of our, our map up there on the screen and, and our, our solution support specialists and our field advisors, our team that we have. Um, so if you guys have questions, um, feel free to reach out to us um, with operations center questions and things like that. Or, or if you want to try to enable some equipment with some of this technology or, or just questions in general about bringing that data into Op Center. Um, we're here to support you guys. Um, uh, with these tools and, and with Operations Center. Um, so yeah, if you want, write, write down our numbers or our email address there or take a screenshot of it or take a picture. Um, but with that, that's kind of everything we have for you guys today. We'll hang out uh, you know, here for a few more minutes if you guys have any questions, but if not, um, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for attending day two of our Operations Center uh, training. Um, well, this is probably something that we, we, we will be looking at doing in the future, um, especially considering we do have updates so often in Operations Center. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do it every time there's changes to Operations Center, but, you know, at certain times throughout the year, we'll probably be looking at doing something like this again. So um, anyways, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your business and have a great day. I'll mention too, right before we end, uh, I believe Shannon's been reaching out to everyone, but we're going to have uh, helpful YouTube videos that have been updated and made from John Deere that will be sent out with these recordings. We've also uh, worked with uh, a local John Deere expert who's put together a few materials for us. So we're gonna try and send that out to you guys as well. We want you to have as much information at your fingertips as possible. So you can uh, figure out as much as you can. And if you run into any headaches, you can always call us. That's right. That's that's all I've got too, Matt. So I guess that's that's it.
Uh, I'll just hang out here for a minute or two. If you guys got any questions you want to type in the chat or anything like that. Um, other than that, that's uh, that's kind of all we have. Okay, we do have one question there. Matt, can you show again how to get the tractor utilization percentage of power used? Okay, sure, Ron. Um, so up here in, uh, I'm gonna switch back to at least um, that organization. So so uh, what I can do, Matt, can you share your screen with us, please? We oh yeah, that would uh, that would certainly help. Yeah, that would make it difficult to uh, to see without me sharing the screen. Okay, so hopefully um, you can see that now, Ron. Um, so up here at the top, under my fluids level, this is where I could go in, and I will just I'll just make a new view in in this circumstance. Um, I'm going to delete this one, so I'm going to go create new view, and I might call this one say engine loads. And then in here, I can go down here to my engine load. And this is where I can see things like my average engine load while I was idling in transport or working. Now, the uh, transport one probably doesn't matter much to us because we don't tend to do a lot of transport work under high horsepower situations a lot of the time. Generally, we're much slower with air seeders and things like that. So I'm going to pick my average engine load here for my working state. Um, but that's also then where there might be other things you could be interested in at the time, what your engine speed could be, um, time and gear, different things like that, um, as well as I'll just go in here under fuel and under agriculture, and I might at the same time just pick my average fuel rate while working, just to tie at the same time to that engine load. Um, would be one other view that I could take. Um, so I'll just use those two for now. And then I can hit the next button here. And what it will do is in the second one is this is where I could order uh, swap the order of them, which one I want to show up first in my view. Um, and then if there was one I wanted to hide to tailor the view, you could switch between hide and show. So I'm just going to hit save here. So this is where now you can see here there would be our average engine load and then our average fuel rate. Um, so this is where you could kind of see those two differences uh while you're working with the machines so yeah i'm kind of a little frustrated that uh that data is not showing up today when it showed up perfectly yesterday hmm. yeah okay um does that kind of explain that a little bit ron Here, Mike, if you if you like Ron, I you can I mute your mic if you like if you have a comment or a question. No, thanks, Matt. That was that was great. I missed that we needed to to set up a new a new type of uh, a view up uh, up uh, up kind of next to machine analyzers. So yeah, no, that's great. Perfect. Yeah. And, and that's, and you can kind of see that from my list. I've custom made certain ones at times, depending upon what I want to look at. So whether I want to look at something for the X9 or different utilization or, or performance, certain sprayer ones, I've made certain layers to look at certain pieces of equipment for certain situations. So um, it is kind of a handy tool that way that you don't have to use the same view all the time and constantly tweak it. You can make multiples. So. So is there a way to see the range of uh, of engine load? Like ours is showing for our 9RX, it's at 56.6. Is there a way to show that, you know, how much percent of the time we were closer up at the top or or did we never get above three quarters? Uh, you know, that would that would tell me a little bit whether we're oversized or not. OK, no, and that's actually I was glad that you said that because this is this was kind of the thing I'm going to be talking about that's going to tie into the future. So the only way to really break that down now would be to go into, say, your timestamp, Ron. So let's say you were pulling a, a high speed tillage tool and you knew you were taking a lot of power, for example, you would have to click on this date stamp, go to that date that you did that tillage pass. Um, 
and shrink that down and then it would show you the average engine load for that day so you could see what it was like for that application what we're going to see merged here over time is that you will be able to go to your actual application layer and it will show you your average engine load for that application pass or that seeding pass or that or that passive harvest so then that should give you a little more specific information for that time does that kind of make sense a little bit Yep, totally makes sense. Because yeah, now I can just go and compare seeding, let's say in May versus anhydrosing in October, and uh, and that would tell us tell us a fair bit more. Exactly, and that was always the struggle a little bit with tractors with breaking down that data was because you know there could be a wide range of of engine load utilization for them. I've seen some guys run air seeders at forty percent and then run tillage at eighty to ninety percent. So, um, if you will be able to break out that data and actually make it more usable and quantifiable for sure. So. Yep. Thanks, Matt. No problem, Ron. So I see we have one other question that's related to boundaries. Uh, I'm just going to pull it up real quickly. Uh, this is something that Operation Center isn't quite as specific with. So we have someone who's wanting to create a, a square, a boundary with a certain dimension and orientation. Uh, if we're getting that detailed it's quite a bit more difficult with operation center uh so i will try and pull things up and share my screen here but yeah i think he's asking can you say do you need a boundary to cover an area that's you know yeah 40 say, feet by 40 feet for example yeah, yeah you can't just input that you want a square by 40 by 40 unfortunately yeah the closest thing you can get is there's a measuring tool uh you can see it here on the far right i'm in my land tab i've created a boundary there is a measuring tool that you can use to uh, show lat longs and the total distance that you're going, but yeah, it's not going to, you can get a certain orientation or, or area out of this um, that'll tell you your total area, but it's, it's not that specific. So in certain scenarios like that, I would recommend you make a boundary. We've quickly drawn one here. I just grabbed any old field and made a boundary. Make the boundary bigger than the area that you're looking for. And once you have documented everything and gotten that information in, you can actually come in and edit this boundary afterwards and you can draw a new one that will be based off of your documentation and it will snap right tight to the area that you've harvested or seeded or sprayed. That's kind of the best solution I can come up with for you on uh, kind of that smaller scale operation. Okay. Any uh, anything else from anybody else? The questions are good. We like questions. Yeah. We won't claim to know all the answers, but <laughs> we like them. <laughs> we don't have an answer now. I'm sure we can eventually get you one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. I'm not seeing too many more questions come in, so I think if there's no other ones, then. We should probably uh, end this so Shannon doesn't have to edit too much of our <laughs> recording. Our video down, that's right. Okay, so yeah, yeah thanks guys. We'll probably call it a wraps uh, for the session then. Um, but yeah, like you said, we showed that information there for, for your product specialists and your field advisors. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us um, and uh, we're here to help, so. All right, thanks for attending everyone and have a good day. Yep, thanks guys, and hopefully we can hit the field here soon, so.